Right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. We will be going over what is a coach versus what is a teacher. And we'll just be exploring some different teaching styles and different approaches, as well as um, kind of putting together a, a rough sketch of a program for each of you. So I've got Canva open. Uh, you can access Canva for free. I do like the paid version. I don't receive any royalties from Canva, although I probably should try and hit them up one day for that. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just here to share my experience with you. Uh, so one thing that we want to do is, is first begin to define what is a coach. And when we think about what what attributes a coach has versus say a teacher or a therapist or a mentor, they can be quite different. So why don't you pop in chat what a coach is to you? And that can be a single word or a sentence or a dissertation if you like. I'll give it a moment just to see, see where everybody is with this idea. What does a coach to you? What does a coach do? Take a look on our chat. Think about that. Have we thought about it? All right. So you guys continue to write that. We have someone who provides a more individualized approach to helping someone with specific needs. Love it. So I'll answer that here. A more and individualized approach for a client's specific needs. And you know, I think that that one's really good. Yes, it, it most certainly is. Um, when, when we look at coaching, oftentimes we know more about the client than the circumstance in which they may be seeking out coaching. Uh, so if, if we build a relationship with our client and we know you know, more about them, what their core values are, what their general goals are, their hopes and dreams, which is what I always love to explore and find out about, then I think it's an easier time to help guide them towards what it is they need versus a group in the room, right? So a group in the room, a teacher, say second grade, comes to the chalkboard, they share what the lesson plan is going to be, and then perhaps test uh, the students on, on knowledge on that. So excellent, excellent answer. Uh, here's the next one. I think a coach is more instruction-y. Uh, I love that. Uh, more instruction-y. To coin a word to the client. All right, so when, when like here at EDGE, when you sign up for yoga teacher training, I hope to find out what it is you, you want to take away from this experience. So what is it you're looking to do? Refine your own personal practice. This is part of a self-exploration journey that you're working on. You want to teach yoga classes. You're already a group fitness instructor and you want to add yoga to your repertoire. You're a teacher at a school and you want to offer mindfulness programs to your students. There's so many reasons what somebody's why might be. And if we can nail down their why, then we can help the client with a roadmap. So we're at via a roadmap. towards their goals. So very nice, love it. Direction, provides direction 
So I would even say provide specific direction to the client. So if we can offer specific direction to the client, then the client then has something a little bit more tangible that could be summed up and written down and maybe a three point bullet point checklist in their journal and hopefully put on the refrigerator or wherever they see each day to remind them of what direction are they trying to go? What is their path? Where do they want to go? And what do they want to get from where they're going? So I, I love that. Yes, provide specific direction to the client. Okay, and then the next one is how do we offer coaching and mentoring is more about the why. So know the client, I'll even write this in caps, know the client's why. Why is it they're doing what they're doing, right? Why is it they're seeking out your help? And I think that if we can know that why, we can really, really tap into what it is they're looking for and what it is they want to do. So beautifully done. Okay, so I'll just minimize the chat here for a moment. All right, slide two. Now that we know what a coach is, let's talk about what a teacher is. So if you came into this program wanting to become a teacher, Hopefully you guys are picking up a few easy tips on how to manage Canva with ease. I give you two minutes to pop in the chat. What is a teacher to you? What is a teacher? Explored what is a coach? Let's talk about what a teacher is. I love to see what everyone comes up with. And hopefully you guys will love these slides. They're all done. Learn a little bit about Canva while you're at it. What is a teacher? What is a teacher? Excellent. A more generalized guide for a group of people. Yes. Very nice. So let's talk about that. So you're talking about in the second grade, the teacher goes up to the chalkboard and delivers the lessons to the students. And then the students will qualify or prove mastery of that information somehow as they teach it back or they pass an exam or maybe they have a project. I was always a big fan of projects or essays. Um, although I am quite skillful in taking an exam, the problem with exams is I've got that in my memory bank for about 24 hours and then it is gone. So when we think about the different styles of learning and the different types of ways that people learn and commonly they learn in, in a combination, you know, some need to see it, some need to do it, some need to hear it, some need to feel it in their body, some, some combination of some or all of those. And the thing with the generalized guide of a group of people is it doesn't oftentimes include that, uh, that really specific one-on-one -on -one absent uh, teacher doing something like it, in yoga teacher training, we put breakout into breakout rooms, for example. Uh, but in the classroom setting, we don't always have this opportunity. And so what usually happens is the people that raise their hand really fast and like to be in front of the podium, such as myself, generally speaks for the entire group while as the people in the back row might not say as much. And so this would be one reason why if you're teaching a yoga class, you might refrain from saying something like, okay, so what kind of yoga do we want to do today? You know, you might really get the reflection of what kind of yoga the person in the front row wants to do today, rather than what was on the schedule and description of the class. It is certainly another, another thing to build on this idea, generalized guide for a group of people, is what's the name of our class? It's beginner yoga, intermediate yoga, advanced yoga, 
what does that mean? What does that mean to me? What does that mean to you? What does that mean to the student? Uh, what does that mean to someone who English is not their first language? You know, throw you a curveball there. So we really want to make sure that we come up with names of classes that reflect what the experience is intended to be with the description of what you have in mind. But the essence of it is really to hold on to enough um, modifications and opportunities to offer an all levels class. So as you look out onto the sea of people, everybody's doing something a little different. That's how I know I've taught an effective and inclusive yoga class is when I look out and they're not all doing exactly what I asked them to do. So that's, that's good stuff. A teacher is more holistic, does instruction, but also a larger format. So yes, uh, let's say, but also on a larger format, uh, format is set in advance. So generally speaking, teachers uh, are less so shoot from the hip or interact or base their next movement on the reaction of what the student in front of them has said. So this is the format. This is what we're going to do. We're going to share this. And it is instructional and is instructional. So one of the benefits of being a teacher is we're offering instruction. Uh, there, there was a joke, I was on a Zoom with Leslie Kamadoff a month or two ago, and he had mentioned, you know, there's, there's a place for let your practice be your own. And then there's also that dividing line where we lack instruction anymore and the students don't know what to do and are looking for guidance. So that's something that you want to keep in mind that I think um, we want to find the sweet spot and the balance for all that. And then a teacher here we've got provides direction with more love and care, right? Direction and we'll write hopefully with love and care. You know, so I'd be remiss if I didn't get the teachers of the world a shout out on thank you for what you do, uh, whether it be teaching preschoolers or kindergarten or elementary or middle school or high school or college or private or art classes or music teachers or yoga teachers, like all the teachers of the world, many come to this profession not for the financial gains because uh, teachers are not known for making all that much money, um, but do bring so much of their love and heart and care into their profession. And it most certainly shows up when they do. So nice answers. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so let's duplicate the page here and go on to the next slide. You see down here, we have slide one, two, and three. You can see them right down here. Look at me teaching you Canva. Okay, next up. How to guide. So whether we are guiding for our student body or our clients as a coach or from the perspective of a teacher, how can we go about doing it? So if you could just take a moment and drop in chat, how are some of the ways that we or what are some of the ways that we can help our client or student um, guide them towards their goals? hopes and dreams. And I'll give you a moment or two to pop that in chat. So we're looking for general tools. So I'll just to get the conversation going, I'll put one journaling as well. All right. Okay. Let's see what you guys got. of in these answers. Give it another moment. All right, so the first one we have, meet the student where they are and then assist them in pushing them to the next level or stage. 
Love it. So meet them where they are. Then encourage them to up level. Right? So some students want to be pushed. Some students need that guiding hand to elicit encouragement or even have faith in them. So I know I've had some students tell me that I have more faith in them than they have in themselves. I'm like, well, let's change that. So I think that that's, that's such a beautiful thing is we need to kind of assess where they are as an individual rather than a student body and then incorporate different ways, which we'll talk about some of the different ways on how we can help lend a guiding hand. I'm pretty sure up level has a little dash here for the teachers in the room. You can let me know if it doesn't have a dash. I feel it needs a dash. Okay, next one, connecting with them before or after class, connecting with them individually. Beautiful. Is there opportunity? Is there space in the room to connect with them to find out how they're doing, what it is they need, and so on? Very good. Then we have encouraging spend quiet time in nature to introspect and then discuss what came up. So I'll pop that up after journaling. Encourage quiet time and introspection. So through the process of journaling, we can start to develop and see patterns that are happening. So if we journal every day and a month later we go back and read our journals, assuming we can read our handwriting, and I think most of you know that I can't really read my handwriting, so I have to get crafty on how I journal. I like Canva, I like websites that helps me uh, go back and see what it is I was thinking on any given day. And all of a sudden I start to see a pattern forming. And that's really, really helpful in that Svadhyaya piece, that self-study piece, that's part of the eight limbs, that self-study piece. Why is it I do what I do? And how can I utilize that in my toolbox, maybe rather than push against my natural way, how can I use that in my toolbox to help me get where I wanna go, right? And that's a really, really wonderful way to do it and encouraging that quiet time and introspection. There's a lot of different ways to do it, uh, but most of the guides or coaches in the land agree journaling is where it's at, minimal. Uh, all right, what else we got? Remember that just because you have a direction to go in, they may go off in their preferred path and that's okay. Yes, your path is not their path. That's a great one. And I will tell you, for me, this was a hard one for a long time because I would have students come to me and they would they would say, this is why I'm enjoying or this is why I'm enrolling um, in yoga teacher training. And I would want to help my students stay there. But sometimes one, the training itself revealed something they didn't know. And two, their why changed somewhere along the way in the process. Why changed? So we'll take a moment and if you wanna write in chat, maybe a, we'll give it two, three minutes for you to write down and journal on what is your why? What brings you here? Why are you interested in coaching or teaching? What does that look like for you? And I'll stop the recording so that we can have an organic conversation about that without you worrying about uh, that being that being recorded or anything along those lines. <laughs> 